Hello, I am Dr. Deepti and we are looking at different topics from maths under the heading D Creations Mathematics. Let us look at the concept of integration by parts. We will begin by understanding when we exactly require it. So what is the motivation for this concept? Now, in one of our earlier episodes, we have talked about integration of exponential function. Now, please keep it in mind that integration by parts is true for different functions. Now, here for simplicity, I am considering uh, the exponential function. So, all of you are aware that when you consider a simple case of integrating an exponential function, Integral of e of e raised to x dx is simply e raised to x plus c. And then if you have a coefficient attached to x, so that if it is integral of e raised to nx dx, we know that it turns out to be 1 upon n e raised to nx plus c. Now what if this function is multiplied by constant, say m? Then we have this general formula, integral of m e raised to nx dx is equal to m upon n e raised to nx plus c. So to give you an example, if you assume m to be minus 4 and uh, assume n to be 7, you will be able to write it as minus 4 by 7 e raised to 7x plus c. So up to this point, we have been looking at this in the previous episode. Now let us consider another important situation. If instead of m we have another function of x. For example, consider the situation where it is integral of x e raised to x dx. So it's no more a constant, it's another function. Now, as I said in the beginning, integration by parts can be used for a variety of function, functions. So let us see other cases, for example, integral of x sin x dx, integral of sin x cos x dx, integral of ln of x dx. Now here, if you understand, there's a hidden function 1. So it is in fact ln of x into 1 dx. So how to solve such integrals? And the method we need for that is integration by parts. Let us try to understand the basic logic behind this method. So if you recollect, we have product rule where if we are differentiating a product of two functions, say uv, then d of dx of uv is equal to u dv by dx plus v du by dx. So if I just try to integrate this, I will get it as integral of d of dx of uv dx is equal to integral of u dv by dx dx plus integral v du by dx dx plus c. Now we are aware that integrating a derivative is going back to the same function. So here we can write it as uv is equal to integral of u dv by dx dx plus integral v du by dx dx plus c. Now if I rearrange the terms and uh, take some terms from the right side to the left, I will get it as integral u dv by dx dx is equal to uv minus integral v du by dx dx plus c. Now please understand here c is an arbitrary constant that's why we are not so much worried about changing its sign or uh, substituting it with c prime or something like that. You, if you wish you can do that but that is not going to make any difference because it's an arbitrary constant of integration. Now this is the formula for integration by parts. So integral of u dv by dx dx is equal to uv minus integral of v du by dx dx plus c. This is the basic formula. Now if you see some examples we have seen earlier that is integral of x e raised to x dx or integral of x sin x dx etc. Now in each of the cases 
you have to choose one as u and other as dv by dx so that it comes in this form and even the choice is not random there is something called a light rule so each one of them represents a certain kind of a function for example this is for logarithmic then this is for algebraic trigonometric exponential etc etc it's for inverse angle so it's not a random choice you have to choose it wisely because if you choose it the other way it can just complicate the situation now let us try to understand this better by taking an example so let us try to evaluate one of the integrals i had written earlier integral of x e raised to x dx now we need to get it into the format which in which which is shown in the box so you need to assign u and dv by dx so here x is assigned u or i can say the other way u is equal to x and dv by dx is equal to e raised to x once you have assigned that your job is really easy because once you know u is equal to x you know that du by dx is just its derivative which will be 1 and dv by dx will be e raised to x so v is going to be integral of that so that is also going to lead you to e raised to x in this case why are we doing this because if i go back to the formula we have assigned u we have assigned dv by dx so v we are able to calculate from dv by dx by integration similarly du by dx we will be able to calculate by differentiating u so you can see that basically we are trying to it's like completing a jigsaw puzzle we are trying to have all the values so for example u you have already assigned dv by dx you have already assigned you already know v you have calculated du by dx you have calculated so you can see that it com completes the whole scenario and as i said c is just arbitrary construct of integration so don't worry much about it but this is how it is going to look now when this is how it is represented it becomes way easier as you will see in the example which we are seeing so coming back to the example we were looking at integral of x e raised to x dx we assigned u to be x dv by dx to be e raised to x and we from that we calculated du by dx to be 1 v to be e raised to x now our job is so simple we we'll just need to substitute the values so integral of x e raised to x dx is equal to x into e raised to x let me switch back see u into v u is x v is e raised to x so just substitution let us also see the other term integral of v du by dx so integral of v which is e raised to x du by dx which is 1 dx plus c so simplify it this comes as it is x e raised to x and what is integral of e raised to x e raised to x itself plus the arbitrary constant of integration so integration by parts helps us evaluate such integrals let me go back to where we had begun we wanted to see why we require it so initially we saw some examples that when you have a simple function how it is easy and then if you just multiply it by a constant still it doesn't change much but then we considered a situation where we have instead of m being a constant we have another function of x and as i said it is not limited to exponential function it is true for all kinds of functions so we have this integral of x sin x dx or integral of sin x cos x dx etc etc and then from the product rule we try to derive the 
formation for integration by parts. So if you can see that it's not very difficult rearrangement of terms and little bit of playing around with integration etc. So you get this as a format. I also talked about light rule. And so all you need to do is when you get an integral of the form say integral of x e raised to x dx, you assign u dv by dx there. From that try to calculate v and du by dx and once you calculate it, simply substitute it. So it is very very easy. But I would suggest that do not mug up this formula. Understand its genesis. That's why this has been shown to you. It just originates from the product rule. So if you understand that, you don't need to mug up anything. You, you will be able to derive it on your own anytime. Okay. And once you are able to derive it, simply make some substitutions and life becomes really easy. So I hope you enjoy solving problems using integration by parts. After this, there will be an episode which will be exclusively for solving different kinds of examples by integration by parts. So till then, bye. Thank you.